Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Very early, on the first day of the week at dawn, the women came to the tomb, bringing the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the entrance of the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body of Jesus. While they were wondering about this, two men in shining clothes suddenly stood beside them. The men said to them, Why are you looking for a living person in this place of the dead? He is not here. He has risen from the dead. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. How joyful it is to celebrate the good news of God's love. We are called to be Easter people. Darkness cannot claim us. Fear cannot bind us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Today we celebrate good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate good news. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. Today we celebrate good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Our psalm of the week is Psalm 114. Psalm 114 is part of Hallel, a Jewish prayer which involves a recitation from Psalms 113 to 118, which is recited by observant Jews on Jewish holidays as an act of praise and thanksgiving. Psalm 114, a Passover song. When the people of Israel left Egypt, when Jacob's descendants left that foreign land, Judah became the Lord's holy people. Israel became his own possession. The Red Sea looked and ran away. The river Jordan stopped flowing. The mountains skipped like goats. The hills jumped about like lambs. What happened, see, to make you run away? And you, O Jordan, why did you stop flowing? You mountains, why did you skip like goats? You hills, why did you jump about like lambs? Tremble, earth, at the Lord's coming, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who changes rocks into pools of water and solid cliffs into flowing springs. Alleluia to our God, who has given us the victory. Alleluia to our God, who has broken the power of death. Alleluia to our God, who has defeated the depths of darkness. Alleluia to our God, who has triumphed over evil. Alleluia to our God, who has shown us the way of life eternal. Let us pray. Creator God, early in the morning, when the world was young, you made life in all its beauty and terror, and you gave birth to all that we know. Holy be your name. Loving God, Early in the morning, when the world least expected it, a newborn child crying in a cradle announced that you had come among us, that you were one of us. Holy be your name. Holy God, early in the morning, surrounded by respectable liars, religious leaders, anxious statesmen and silent friends, you watched your son accept the penalty for doing good. For being God. You shouldered and suffered the cross. Holy be your name. Mysterious God, early in the morning, a voice in a guarded graveyard and footsteps in the dew proved that your son Jesus had risen, that you had come back to those and for those who had forgotten, denied and destroyed you. Holy be your name. Jesus Christ, God with us, this morning, in the multicoloured company of your church on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation, your life, your death and resurrection, your interest in us. Bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness, where we feel hurt and where we have wounded, 
Bring the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are prisoners of ourselves. Through your rising from the tomb, you broke the power of the grave. You broke the power of death and condemned death itself to die. As we celebrate your resurrection, O Christ, may we also make it the model for our living. Help us to identify in our lives all that should rightly die. Redundant relationships, tired habits, fruitless longings. Resurrect in our lives faith, hope and love, as surely as you rose from the grave. And now we pray together in the words you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and for evermore. Amen. Acts chapter 10 verses 34 through to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realise how true it is that God does not show favouritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of the peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are in witness of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Luke 24, the resurrection, reading from verse 1 through to verse 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all of these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. May God bless these readings from his holy word. Amen. Recently, I read a book by writer Nan Shepherd, which is about the Cairngorm Mountains. It's called The Living Mountain. One chapter talks of the wildlife found in those mountains, 
and of the golden eagles who live there. She talks of walking, watching them take off and slowly spiral upwards, cycling higher and higher till they reach their optimum flight path from where they can seemingly effortlessly explore their empire. R.S. Thomas, the 20th century Welsh priest poet, likens our life journey to that of a spiral journey round a cone, talking of how in our journey through time we come round not to the same place but recognise it from a distance, and how we travel round the spiral in between each turn our false starts, failures and the ruins from which we climbed. Aris Thomas believes we travel towards the possibility of God's presence at the cones, the spirals, point. This year, that seems to me how my understanding of Easter is working. Every year the festival comes round, but you and I, we're never quite the same, year on year. With every new year, we come to our Easter celebration changed just a bit. We have more living behind us, more joy more sorrow, more questions, more answers. There's a lot going on in the world just now, nationally and internationally. Lots of change, lots of troubles. And yet Easter still comes around just after the first full moon after the spring equinox. That cyclical returning to fixed points helps ground us. It's God's way into our busy and white noise lives. Advent, the hope of God coming. Christmas, God living among us. Lent, the looking towards hope and light. Holy Week, the realisation that there is evil out there still. The possibility of dark and hate overcoming good. Easter, the explosion of hope and light and love and peace. As God in Jesus comes alive again as goodness triumphs against the odds. Through the centuries, Christians have thought up many ways to represent the mystery of the resurrection. Here are a few. A pomegranate, which bursts open when ripe to reveal its goodness. A swallow, which reappears every spring after having disappeared. A phoenix, which rises from the ashes of its own grave. A lily, a dry bulb turning into a beautiful flower. A peacock. After molting, it becomes beautiful again. Hares and rabbits, which are prolific procreators. An egg, which contains life. And a butterfly. And the caterpillar turns into a beautiful insect. Some of these we're very familiar with, and some have just faded into the past. When the women went to the tomb that first resurrection day, they were sad, dutiful, possibly annoyed at the men for not getting up in time to come with them or for being too afraid of the Roman soldiers to get out of the house. They certainly didn't expect to have to recalibrate their understanding of life again. In the space of four days, things had gone from very good to unbelievably bad, and now that they'd just settled to that unbelievably bad state, Two shiny men were telling him that everything had changed again. Of course, it's unlikely that those heavenly messengers gave the theological treatise the writer of Luke has them give, but the gist was there. No point in looking for Jesus here. He's not dead. Amazed, scared, puzzled, mystified, the women run back to Peter and their friends, telling out their good news. Everything has changed again. Here's a poem by Scott Barton. It's called Different News Feed. Just women were the first evangelists for what had happened on that day. After their fear, they ran to tell the news and weren't believed. So now we see, well, colour me surprised. What's new? Like, duh. When Luke says Peter checked it out and found it so, and yet he just went home, we sometimes criticise his doubts. But don't forget that he went home amazed, which is a quality we need. Try going home amazed this Easter day, since love, all fear and death exceeds. In these, our public narcissistic times, when pomp and bombast anger feeds, 
Be brave in love and don't hold back, for Christ is risen and risen indeed. The good news of Easter. Amazingly, there is hope and there is peace. Amazingly, love can win over hate. Amazingly, we worship a God who loves us and amazingly, we follow the ways of the Christ who was prepared to show that love by risking all, taking on even death itself. As the poem says, try going home amazed this Easter day, since love all fear and death exceeds. As our blessing at the end of the service will announce, the vacant cross and the empty tomb vindicate Christ's claim that the love which suffers is the love that saves. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Let us pray. Let the whole church rejoice, in city and in the countryside, in this land and throughout the world, for Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We pray for all who are struggling for peace, all who are longing for new hope and new life. We remember war-torn cities and places that have suffered from disasters. We pray for the cities and villages of Ukraine, Syria, of Yemen, of occupied Palestine. We remember those affected by the flooding in Australia, those still recovering from the cyclone in the Philippines and the wildfires raging in New Mexico. We pray for all who are seeking to rebuild communities and lives, all who are bringing new life and courage to oppressed peoples. 
Lord, may they know you and the power of your resurrection. May the power of the resurrection be known in our homes. In you, risen Lord, may relationships be strengthened and restored. In you, risen Lord, may hearts be healed and well-being restored. We think of those in homes where there is violence or neglect and pray for the work of social workers and agencies such as the SPCC. Lord, may we know you and the power of your resurrection. We pray for all struggling peoples that they may find hope in you. We pray for the chronically ill, for all who walk in darkness, for all who are in pain and all who have lost hope, for all distressed or disturbed peoples, for those who are terminally ill and those near to death. Lord, may they know you and the power of your resurrection. We remember all whose loved ones have died. May they be comforted, knowing that those they love are now where sorrow and pain are no more. And in this silence, we pray especially for those situations and people close to our hearts. God hears our prayers and encourages us by the Holy Spirit to answer them. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to worship with you. This week, may we know the hope and joy of Christ's resurrection in our lives. And now a blessing. The vacant cross and the empty tomb vindicate Christ's claim that the love which suffers is the love which saves. So send us, your people, out into this week, filled with joy and celebration, that the world may know that God's Holy Son Jesus is not a dead hero we commemorate, but the living Lord we worship, to whom, with the Creator and the Holy Spirit, be our praise forevermore. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Thank you.